One year after the early access release of V Rising, the first major update to the game, Secrets of Gloomrot, is finally here. New bosses, new monsters, new, well, everything. My name is Kodiak, this is Legacy Gaming, and today we're here to help you jump into all of the new content and avoid making some huge mistakes. Before we begin, I want to say a huge thanks to Stunlock Studios for giving us the opportunity to check out the update early. We are massive fans of V Rising and personally think it's one of the best survival games out there. And believe it or not, this update made everything way better. Let's start with something simple that isn't exactly new, but has been updated. Weapon and gear durability, specifically on PvP servers. In V Rising, you'll receive durability damage on weapons and gear in both PvE and PvP anytime an enemy hits you, or on specifically your weapons when you hit an enemy or a resource node. That, of course, is to be expected. Where it can quickly get out of hand is when you die in PvP. We're talking the state beyond being revived, where your loot bag fully drops on the ground. In this situation, you'll find your weapons and gear lose a sizable amount of durability, 25% in most situations. Now, it's been cut down in half to 12.5%. Thankfully, that amount is much lower than it used to be, aiming to incentivize fighting and be much less punishing towards progression. But where this might sneak up on you is when it comes to all the additional weapons and gear you may be carrying in your inventory. For those of you who run around Veritaron with a hotbar full of weapons, if you aren't using them all that frequently, then you're just burning away precious resources, especially if you're carrying some endgame gear which requires some of the most valuable materials used to repair. The TLDR here is this, only take multiple weapons into PvP if you are actively using them. Things like the Slasher's Incapacitate into the Spear's Thrust combo do incredible damage on single targets, but if you aren't making efficient use of these weapon combinations, then it's best to leave most of them back at the Crypt. One of the most useless items in the game up until this point were Silver Coins. They required a high silver resistance rating or even the use of silver resistance potions to transport, and when you got to the Bright Haven Trade District, the variety of things you could buy with them was extremely limited. Straight up, before the Gloomrod update, they weren't worth the trouble. Well, no longer. There are now three tiers of coins, copper, silver, and gold sun, and they directly correspond to your progression tier. These coins can be traded for anything from basic resources to full research books for specific items. Various vendor camps now show up across Fair Durant. Copper coins at the Shady Merchants Camp in Farbane Woods, silver coins at the Farmer's Market in the Dunley Farmlands, and gold sun coins in the Bright Haven Trade District in Silverlight Hills. Because of this, coins directly translate to progression and can be the thing you need to get that one research book to make the leap into the next tier of content. Later on, you can even upgrade silver coins to gold suns via the new Fabricator workstation, and this can let you fill out your tier 3 research incredibly fast, potentially putting you ahead of many other players on your server. The best part? With the new bag items that you can craft at the leather working station, dedicated silver bags can protect you from the effects of those silver coins, allowing you to safely transport them wherever and whenever you want without needing to build up your resistance stat. Plain and simple, this is a progression-changing tip that we think everyone needs to know about. Another quick tip that we think you should all be aware of is this. Hoard every single gem you get along the way and always go out of your way to farm gen nodes whenever you see them. Why? Well, because of the brand new spell jewel system, something we go over in great length in a dedicated video. You'll need a metric ton of flawless gems come endgame to not only tap into your spell's full potential via spell jewel crafting, but also for crafting legendary weapons. Every single gem is useful because you can refine them into higher tier gems. Much like the coin bags, you even have dedicated bags now to carry gems, so there should never be an excuse to leave any behind. While silly, this next mistake is one you'll no doubt encounter. In fact, our entire team felt like idiots on multiple occasions because of this problem. When you get back to base, don't forget to empty those extra bags. This might seem ridiculous, but because they don't display their contents by default, I can't even tell you the amount of times we all didn't visit the chest for those bags to empty their contents. This often resulted in us going to use our teleporter either in base or away from base, only to find that we couldn't fast travel due to having gems in our bags. 
Our tip to you is this, get in the habit of toggling that little arrow next to your bag slots as soon as you get back to base, allowing you to see the contents of those additional bags every time you open your inventory. Trust me when I say the time spent walking back and forth because you forgot to empty those bags really does add up. When it comes to getting around the map, nothing compares to the horses commonly found in the Dunley farmlands. Each one is unique with random stats in speed, maxing out at 11, acceleration maxing out at seven, and turning speed maxing out at 14. The better these stats, the better the horse is. It's as simple as that. Well, up until this point, if you found that perfect horse, the chances of it dying or being stolen right from under your nose were astronomically high, and generally one of the biggest complaints amongst players. You'd find one with good stats, you'd keep it hydrated so it'd stay alive, and you'd take it out only for a stray fire arrow to end its life. With the Gloomrod update, I'm happy to say all of this is a thing of the past because of one important addition, Vampiric Horses. As you progress your castle heart, you'll unlock various upgrades along the way. Once you upgrade to level four, you'll unlock the brand new Vampiric Power, Dominate Mount. This will allow you to select any horse and convert it to an undying stallion that you and only you can ride. From here, you'll be able to craft a saddle, granting one additional level to both the speed and acceleration of the vampiric horse it's equipped on. In addition to this stat boost, you can use Dominate Mount at any time, channeling this vampiric power to summon your mount directly to you from wherever it is in the world, also fully healing it. You also get access to two leap charges that allow you to phase through otherwise impassable objects or enemies. Now, I don't think this kills off wolf form by any means due to the decently long channel time, but this is without a doubt the best way to travel anywhere in Verduran. With that in mind, keep an eye out for that perfect horse. Get it back to base safely, keep it alive, and you'll be able to reap the benefits for an eternity. If you've played V Rising in the past, then you likely know that good castle placement can mean all the difference, not just in terms of easy access to resources, but also from a defensive point of view when it comes to PvP. While that hasn't exactly changed from a strategy point of view, the introduction of a new territory system has completely shaken up the game in terms of what's the best place to build. Spots like those in the corners of the Cursed Forest and outer edge of Silver Lake Hills are no longer that bastion of impenetrability that they once were, because the idea of castle stacking is no longer possible. Territories, the areas that you are permitted to build on, now have dedicated borders that you must keep all structures within. This means you can't layer three of your group's separate castles to form a constantly resetting wall during a siege. It also means you can't block off resources or the entrances to other bases, either to try and grief other players or defend your team. Heck, even forward raid bases are kind of off the table unless you can safely snag a territory near the base you're going to raid. The territory system even solves the problem of players being able to land on ledges in bat form. Moving forward, if you wanna get into a castle, you most likely have to use the front door. Of course, the bases on the edge of the map still have an advantage since players can't leap off the side to escape with loot during a raid. But by and large, your base location should now be more about what resources are easily within traveling distance, where the closest teleporters are, or what area of the map you just like living in the most. Our personal recommendation? The southern part of Gloomrot and most territories in the Dunley farmlands offer exceptional access to just about any piece of content the game has to offer. Towards the final stages of the game, the southwestern part of Silverlight Hills also has quick access to sacred grapes, higher tier gem nodes, and an abundance of core materials in Brighthaven. But the trek to other sides of the map can be quite tedious. One place I personally can no longer recommend as a place to build or even rush to get a castle heart down in is the Cursed Forest. The main reason? the brand new debuff you get just by being in that zone, the Curse of the Forest. The debuff will tick up rather quickly from zero all the way to 100 just by being in the zone. The closer to 100 you get, the more obscure both your map and minimap get. As that number ticks up, even your vision in the forest gets cut down to just a couple meters due to the suffocating fog. This can quite literally cause you to get lost in the forest. Now you can temporarily negate this effect by using these wisps randomly scattered around the forest. Releasing one will grant you an incredibly short buff that resets your curse counter and restores visibility before starting up again. Unfortunately, they aren't always easy to find. So what's a vampire to do? 
At around level 62, you'll have the opportunity to track down the Old Wanderer, a brand new V-Blood unit that, once defeated, will grant access to the Shroud of the Forest Cloak. This cloak has no stats, but makes you immune to the curse. Now, having no stats on a cloak means you'll lose out on a sizable health buff and boost to your resistances, but there is a solution here. If you keep the Shroud of the Forest in a hotbar slot, usually 8 or 9 for us, you can quickly swap your Shroud with a cloak that has stats, allowing you to always be combat ready without sacrificing your sanity. Last up, we wanted to talk a little more in terms of optimizing your base's form and function. Both PvE and PvP players alike will benefit from these tips, especially players who are jumping into V-Rising for the very first time. The easiest mistake to make in this game is in regards to your crafting station placement. To this day, a year later, we are still seeing players build large, open rooms and cramming everything into one space. Within the game, this not only looks terrible, but is actively hurting your progression. Every crafting station in the game will have this information at the top of the menu that asks, is your station inside a confined room? Great, here's a 25% reduction in production time. How about, is your crafting station also placed in a room covered in the correct floor type? Fantastic, take a 25% material cost reduction. If you don't have the matching floor types, don't worry. You'll just need the specific research unlocked in one of the three different research stations by discovering them with the appropriate research material or using a research book to directly learn a specific recipe. Quite literally, checking off both boxes will save you thousands of materials, meaning you'll need to farm less and you can progress faster. In the same vein, an organized base is an efficient base. As you can see in our quick build during the preview, we had a centralized loot room that opens up to three castle teleporters. These would take us directly to dedicated crafting rooms that were further away than one door. This ensures the minimal amount of time was spent walking to our desired crafting stations. In addition to that, Livid also utilized a neat trick of placing wall torches that matches the color of the different schools of magic before placing the storage cabinets down, allowing the color to bleed through and immediately letting us know which jewel cabinet was where. Of course, you do have the option to name all of your storage bins, but being able to walk into a room and visually know exactly where to go saves you even more time. Another thing we want to mention is more on the bug side of things than anything else. We aren't exactly sure when or if this issue will get fixed, but it could become a massive hassle to you if you make this mistake. Don't place stairs facing into the direct edge of a territory border. This will render the staircase unsalvageable until you remove every single wall around it. For good measure, just try to avoid placing these things next to a border. Leave a gap and you'll thank us later. The last base tip we'd like to mention is in regards to your garden. Gone are the days of the mandatory outside garden because the Gloomrod update added in a ton of new planters and decorations. They come in small, medium, and large sizes and allow you to grow everything you need inside. This is huge because while players can't bat form into your territory, they certainly can still frog form up to unprotected areas. Putting your garden inside or even on the rooftop can keep your neighbors from reaping the rewards of your hard work. So as you can see, whether you're a veteran player returning to the update or someone just picking up the game for the first time, a lot has changed and a lot has been improved. Even something as simple as the V-Blood Tracker being moved to its own dedicated menu, letting you track targets on the fly, will save you time. It's the combination of substantial new content and huge quality of life improvements that makes us even more excited for future updates to this game. And you better believe we'll always be here with everything you need to know about V-Rising. Once again, I want to thank Stunlock Studios for giving myself, Livid, and Schmo preview access to the Gloomrot update. Without them, we wouldn't have been able to get you up to speed and ensure your rush on the freshly wiped PvE and PvP servers goes smoothly. Of course, there is much more to come as we head into the launch of the content update, so if you're a returning player or a new player to the world of V-Rising, drop us a like and consider subscribing. I also want to invite you to join the Legacy Gaming community on Discord. If you're looking for a place to hang out, party up for V-Rising, talk about other great games, and win free prizes, check out the link in the description below. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.